Uh, thank you both for your detailed uh, and thoughtful testimony. Uh, Director Haynes, uh, Secretary Yellen indicated that we will uh, exceed the debt limit by June 1st, uh, requiring action before that. Have you, the intelligence community assess the international consequences of default on our debt? Thank you, Chairman. I, so I, we don't have certainty on the outcome of uh, the financial markets nor of countries' opinions of sort of economic and political leadership that might be affected by uh, a default on the debt. But I would say that what our assessment is is that regardless of its you know, duration of a default's duration, almost certainly it would create global uncertainty about the value of the U.S. dollar and U.S. institutions and leadership leading to volatility in currency and financial markets and commodity markets that are priced in dollars. And that's basically as far as our analysts are able to provide. Let me follow up is, uh, and you might want to take this for the closed session also, but uh, our adversaries, I would presume, would want to exploit any type of difficulty that we have. Do we have any indications that uh, China in particular is preparing for exploitation of this, uh, either through disinformation in the United States or through uh, financial or other uh, moves? So I don't have any information that, su that suggests that they're planning for that, but I think our analysts would agree with you that it would be, uh, you know, um, almost a certainty that they would look to take advantage of the opportunity, and they generally, both Russia and China, would look to perceive, uh, you know, sort of narrate through information operations such a, an event as demonstrating the chaos within the United States that we're not capable of functioning as a democracy and uh, and sort of you know, the governance issues associated with it. They've done that on a range of things. Thank you. Uh, General Barrier, we had General Cavoli here, who's doing a superb job, uh, and he indicated that uh, Russia remains a formidable force despite their significant losses in personnel in the Ukraine uh, because the air, maritime, space, cyber, and strategic forces have not really been committed to that effort. Uh, what's DIA's assessment of the Russia's capacity? Uh, very, very similar. Uh, still an existential threat with a nuclear arsenal that they have. Uh, General Cavoli is correct that their strategic forces have largely been untested here, and it's still, uh, still formidable. Uh, so that the uh, significant uh, redistribution of forces out of Europe would still be a, a challenge because of their uh, existing capacities. I think from a from a deterrence standpoint, uh, Russia Russia fears strength, and so. Uh, even even though their 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 ground forces um, are degraded right now, they will quickly build those back. Thank you. And Director Haynes, uh, as I said in my statement, uh, you, the intelligence community has done some remarkable work with respect to Russia and Ukraine by exposing uh, activities the Russians were contemplating before they could do it. Not only embarrassing them, but in many cases frustrating their ability to do it. Are we ready to uh, use that same approach to other uh, adversaries, such as China, in terms of uh, strategically uh, using intelligence to disrupt their operations? Thank you, sir. I, I think we can talk about this also in closed session a bit more, but as a general matter, we have learned some techniques and mechanisms that will not be forgotten coming out of the conflict with Ukraine that I think we can uh, deploy in other scenarios, which have allowed us to do more sharing and downgrading of information, kind of working as a team across the IC to try to preserve sources and methods in that process. And, uh, and I think we will look to do that, but I think, I think it will be more challenging in different areas depending on what those sources and methods are and how we can manage uh, that concern as we move forward. Uh, just quickly for, for both of you, uh, we've had this incident with the Air National Guardsman, Texera, uh, years before that, Snowden, so this is not really new. Uh, we thought and we think every time this happens, we uh, put in place things like uh, keystroke logging, uh, more restricted controls, um, uh, but we're still having problems. So just uh, quickly, Director Haynes, uh, what can we do to make sure we have more uh, appropriate uh, controls? 
Yeah, thank you, sir. I, it's been absolutely uh, like extremely frustrating, obviously, and demoralizing for folks in the intelligence community who work so hard, frankly, to put together the kind of intelligence that then gets disclosed in leaks, and the damage that it does to our national security is just unacceptable on every level, obviously, and I appreciate the support. I think what I can tell you at this stage is only an interim answer, because we are still getting the information from the investigation as to what exactly happened, and to understand that is obviously then to have greater confidence in saying that the things that we're doing are going to make a difference to ensure that this doesn't happen again, and right now uh, what we are doing is looking to ensure that we, in fact, have the best, uh, you know, user activity monitoring, other techniques that we use, that we are, uh, you know, again, scrubbing and reviewing our processes for ensuring that there is only information provided on a need-to-know basis, that when there is user privileges that they are appropriately granted, that we have additional, uh, you know, um, controls around these issues, and we can obviously talk about this more Thank in you. closed session. Uh, Senator Worker, please.